in the context of um, um, the development of daratumumab, it's clear that the earlier you use daratumumab, the better the results are. So from patients who were treated in you know, late refractory disease, um, the response rate is roughly 30% or so. But we, we've all seen data now from uh, the relapsed setting and, and you know, first relapsed setting with the Pollock study and the Castor study where in combination uh, the results with Dara look really impressive. So like many other people in the myeloma community, we thought, well, what if we take Dara and put it front line? But unlike most others, um, we were interested in doing this using a combination that didn't contain an immunomodulatory drug. And a, an alternative um, um, triplet that's commonly used um, as the backbone of uh, frontline regimens is um, uh, Velcade, Cyclophosphamide and Dexamethasone, VCD or Cybor-D. And in Ireland, we had been using this for a number of years on a weekly basis, giving weekly bortezma, cyclophosphamide, and, and dexamethasone, and getting you know, acceptable results. And this is a, a well-tolerated, convenient, and cost-effective regimen. So we felt that if we could combine daratumumab to this, it might again provide a very convenient, upfront, cost-effective uh, treatment for induction for newly diagnosed patients. Beyond, however, the convenience, the other thing that, that was of interest to us is that if you look at many of the regimens that are used in lymphoid malignancy um, that uh, combine uh, or that you know, are used to treat um, um, in combination with a monoclonal antibody, they tend to contain cyclophosphamide. And there's actually some very interesting data. Um, the original publication goes back, I think, to about 2014 from Christian Palash and colleagues, um, I think it was in Cologne, where they were able to show that cyclophosphamide has the ability to activate macrophages, which enables um, better or enhanced phagocytosis of antibody uh, coated cells. So in other words, better antibody dependent cellular phagocytosis. And we ge generated some data in the laboratory that in fact, this phenomenon was also potentially operational in, in multiple myeloma as well. So we made the rationale that if we combine cyclophosphamide with daratumumab, that we could potentially enhance the efficacy by engaging more macrophages. And so essentially what we did was a small phase 1b study um, where we enrolled a total of 18 patients. The primary endpoint of the study um, uh, it was, it was a safety endpoint uh, to determine the maximum tolerated dose of this combination that we could then take into further studies and also uh, there was a primary efficacy endpoint which was the rate of complete response following autologous stem cell transplantation. We also did, were very interested in the mechanistics of how cyclophosphamide might interact um, and the, you know, the cyborg D regimen might interact with daratumumab and so we had the opportunity on the study to take samples from patients on treatment and interrogate what was happening to their macrophages and their, their myeloma cells. So to sort of cut a long story short, we found that this regimen is very tolerable. We could safely deliver 1.5 milligrams per meter squared of bortezomib weekly along with cyclophosphamide, 300 milligrams per meter squared weekly, and daratumumab on the, the standard schedule. 